It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Buck Bait. Better the Hunt. Rebel Six Rubs and Seasonings. Easy Cut. Limb Walker Game Calls. Sunrise Archery. Total Peep. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Packer Max. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Scent Blocker. Scent Lock. Copper Jazz. And Stanislavski Release Aids. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal. Everybody, host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight on a glorious Sunday evening here Absolutely. in Michigan. Absolutely. We are back. Great weather. I've seen critters stirring all day today. I've seen a lot of turkey. I've seen some deer. Uh, it's just a beautiful time to be outside right now in Michigan. I was, is, actually, I was actually up at camp helping out with a few things up there this weekend. Things are looking good. How's colors? At camp, they're not there. Okay. Um, but 20 miles south, strangely enough, they're starting to pop. Oh, gotcha. So Mark Coleman likes my shirt. Yeah. Like that? He likes easy this. cut, yeah. yeah I got easy you got cut. the easy cut going. I got the PSC rocking tonight. For once, we don't have the same shirt on, but we are wearing the same hat, and that wasn't planned either. Right, as usual. So, so yeah. So, you know what? So the colors, see, that's the weird thing about how these colors are rolling, right? Yeah. See, now I'm going to head up to the UP next weekend, and I, and I wonder if there'll be any it's, color at all, or it's going to be past. They said it's past, past peak, so. Okay, so good. But what's not past peak yet is our, our friends that help us, so let's help them help our listeners that, and viewers. That's right, folks. If you can go over and support our supporters, it helps both of us, and there's nothing like going over to Buck Bates. Uh, going out, check over their lineup, uh, their, their scents, their cover scents. Uh, they've got a few other backpacks and and. and and uh, items on their list, but get over there and you can get a discount of 20% over there if you use the promo code Up North Journal when you check out at buckbaits.com. But even then, you can still be grilling, and there's nothing better than using uh, Rebel Six Rubs over at rebelsixrubs.com. Use the promo code North Journal on your way out at checkout and you'll get 20% off. But last but not least, what we're drinking in the studio now is Hunter's Blend. And there's nothing better than going over to Hunter's Blend Coffee and using the bro- promo code capital U N J. And that my fingers waving at right there. That's right. When you check out, you'll get your discount there. So there you go. There you go. So, uh, yep. Mark Allen just got home from Pigeon. Saw one nice buck at about seventy yards. Good deal. Absolutely. You know, I did a live drop uh, Thursday. You and, did. I saw yeah, that. You, and one of the questions that I always had. And I really never used them. I've kind of used them, but I've, I've never been a true blue person to use them. In. And I needed to know some answers. So I said, you know what? What better way to do it than get somebody on to interview about lighted knock? Right. So I figured I'd reach out to Luminox one and only Bill Reich and have him come on the show and talk about Luminox. How's it going, Bill? Oh, it's going, man. It's going. How are you guys doing up there? Uh, well, it, we've had a beautiful day. It's, it's nice out. I got a little run in today. And uh, getting ready for season, and we're we're anxiously awaiting to start slinging some arrows here, just as soon as we can. So, it, oh, amen. So, amen. Where is Carbondale, Illinois? That's where you reside at. So, uh, tell everybody uh, kind of where that's at. Well, I'm I'm roughly about a half hour north of Paducah, Kentucky. Uh, probably about an hour away from the southeast corner of Missouri, and uh, another hour ish uh, over to Indiana. All right, so you're down there in what they call the tri-state or quad-state area, man. You're down in God's country, man. That's awesome. Yep, yeah, we they definitely grow some big deer down here. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, 35, 35 miles northeast of me is where two of the national record deer, uh, free range, mind you, the Brewster buck, and I forgot the other one, uh, but they were taken about 35 or 40 miles northeast of me here. And, man, I that one, if I did... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say it was it was a 52, uh, 52 point deer. I mean, in free range. I mean, nowhere near any you know any 12 foot you know 12 foot operation, and you know didn't obviously it didn't have a chance to get out of one because well there isn't one around there. Right, right. Yeah, but, that's a beautiful uh, area down there, man. Just a ridiculous deer, though. If y'all haven't checked that one out, I, I would definitely, you know, kind of do a quick Google of the Brewster buck. And, man, it, 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 that thing is absolutely just ridiculous. 52 it, points. I mean, yes, sir. That's a point for for every week of the year. It is. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a weak buck. A weekly buck of growing, <laughs> obviously, but 52 wow. points I mean, is just an incredible number. It's a, I, I forgot what the actual measurement on it was, but I mean, you know, 52 points on a, on a free range animal. And, and I believe the, uh, the gentleman that took it was actually from Virginia and came into uh, uh, Southern Illinois to hunt with his buddies. And uh, just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And uh, that thing, it, it come rolling out and, and he laid into it and I'll be dipped. I mean, I've seen that thing. I've seen the mount, um, you know, in person uh, several times. And it, it is just absolutely majestic. And it, I, I, I couldn't even fathom, um, you know, what would go through my head buck fever wise or anything else if I saw something like that walking around I'd, I'd be questioning my eyes uh and and <laughs> right? i just see that right <laughs> right you know? no um, doubt about it that's incredible and I, I, yeah and i mean christ like i know my hand would be like you know you know uh shaking like it was going out of style so i'd have to try to get the breathing under control but you know uh we do what we can do sometimes we get them sometimes we don't take the good with the bad and and move on to the next one that's usually how it goes you know you roll with it and you try to figure it out and and you know whether you come across a brewster buck like that or maybe it's your first buck out in the wild or anything like that it's one of those things that you just kind of you know like you said relax your breathing figure it out and and whether it be you want to call it buck fever or, or whatever it might be it, but that's one of the enjoyments of hunting Right? Absolutely. You know, you, Absolutely. You know, whether it be your first buck, uh, one of your plenty bucks, or, or maybe even a doe, you still get that super excitedness mm-hmm. that you were able to to take a deer and uh, harvest it and feed your family. Yep. And it's just, it, it. I think the more joy I get out of it is knowing what we're doing with the meat after, whether it be breakfast sausage, yep. hunter sausage, steaks on the grill, something like that. I think it's just been a really cool thing that we are able to do as hunters is provide back to the table and you know it, it a brewster buck would be awesome but i'll take a doe like you did uh last week right yeah that, that was a big old girl I, I shot her with my uh with my crossbow it was uh the first uh it actually the first hunt that that crossbow had been out on and uh roughly an hour into the morning uh, a group of four pretty much identical big doe came out and i'm like well eeny meeny miny thwack all and right. you know, you know, then it's uh, then it was on from there. And I mean, I think we could probably kind of sum up the the buck fever or doe, just deer fever. There you go. All right. So hold on one second. Let's take a quick break. We got to take care of some technical issues here, and we'll be right back. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. For those of you on the live stream, uh, we're back on. And for those of you on the podcast, we threw real quick to uh, a break so we could get the internet fixed. We're back up and running here. So before we left for the break, though, when we dropped off the internet, we were talking a little bit about your doe hunt. So let's back up a little bit. And Danny, ask your question again. Yeah. So, you know, you're, when did your season open up in Illinois? October 1st. Okay. So you got a doe right off the bat. Within the first hour, yes. There you go. So, uh, was, so the that, first hour you were done doe hunting. Yeah, you gotta like and, that. In Illinois, we can we can shoot as many doe um, as we want. We're limited to two bucks. Okay. Uh, whether it be during gun season or archery, um, you could take one archery and one, you know, one gun or two archery, and you know that that's it for the buck situation. And I know. Uh, some of the counties up north have the late uh, late antlerless hunt uh, where it, it's somewhat of the potential CWD areas up there more toward um, you know the, the Wisconsin line uh, all the way up north and there's a you know a few scattered counties from me north a little bit but you know when you get 
up toward that Wisconsin line, that's where they've got the uh, uh, the majority of those late winter uh, hunts to try to, I don't know if that's actually a solution for it or not. Uh, I don't think anybody knows, uh, to be honest with you, because you can ask 10 different guys and they're going to tell you 10 different things. Yeah, we've had right? many a discussion, spent a lot of time here yeah, talking on the show about that. So. About that. <laughs> so let's yeah. talk about some good stuff. Right, exactly. So, so <clears throat> I don't even want to get into that, that, uh, that contest per well, se, because yeah, it's a, it's n- nothing good's going to happen with it. No, it's a minefield. <laughs> no, it's a minefield, and up in the UP where I hunt, I can't shoot does, and there's a whole big thing about it, and it just makes me what? boil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they say we don't have enough deer, and because uh, they were going to allow it, then they changed the rule a little bit because I have so much snow for X amount of days, da 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 da, and I can't shoot a doe. <laughs> But I can look at wolves and coyotes and bears, oh my, all over the place. So, anyways. Wow, hey, that's, that's weird. And, I mean, I would uh, one of the, uh, the, the products I use, uh, you know, Zeus Broadheads, um, the, the inventor is, is up in New Jersey, and they have, that, uh, they have a program where it's earn a buck. So yeah. you actually have to shoot a doe first before you can even, you know, lay into a buck and – I mean, it, it's weird hearing it, all over the nation what the different regulations are. and It is amazing that what you just said is is one of the conversations that has been all over the board of, of what can we do to be for for the deer better and, and whatnot you know and one of the solutions was earn a buck oh no we can't do that uh, let's try no can't do that let's try no can't do it, it's it is a political minefield how it works up here in Michigan and yeah. it, it's one of those things you just all right enough enough talking exactly. about politics. Let's get into some good stuff. You know, it's just one of those things. So you got your dough, and you know what? You must have been using Luminoc on them, right? I, yeah, I might have. Okay, so what color were you using? Uh, that one was a, uh, a pink, which actually glows um, more red. Uh, the knock itself uh, is, colored, is colored pink, so thusly the name of Pink Luminoc. Um, once it's activated, it in my eyes it glows red. Some people say it's it's an off pink, whatever you want to call it. It's bright. Mm-hmm. And, it, 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 and one of the one of the things I know with a lighted knock, I would assume that you want is a bright light. So when you shoot the thing and it's either in the deer running away or it went through the deer, you see where it went. Yep. And did, okay. was your shot on this doe a pass through? No, it was actually a, a very odd one. I had a broadside shot, and it was at about sixty yards. Um, I got my, you know, got my sixty yard line on her, and I don't know if she she did a little bit of a move uh, to the right, and um, instead of hitting behind the shoulder, it went in right in front of the right shoulder, and uh, that's that's the way that I found her on the ground uh, about fifty yards later, and. Um, the only thing that was uh, sticking out of the deer was the fletching and the knock, which was a, you know, um, a pretty cool picture, mind you. Okay. Um, Yeah, definitely. A little bit on the gory side, a little bit of blood coming out. I mean, you know, really not the, uh, you know, not the, uh, uh, the washed off pick or anything like that. But I mean, I, I found her within 50 yards after the shot. And I mean, I, I'd been playing, you know, with that crossbow pretty much about daily. And I mean, I know I was every time. So the only thing that I can, the only thing I can figure out is that she, she heard, you know, that, boom, you know, when the, you know, when I shot and she just moved just a few inches and, and, and that's where it, uh, that's where it caught her. And uh, it, you know, broke, it broke in scapula, broken ribs, uh, double lung and heart shot. She, you know, she wasn't going to go far. Oh, awesome. Well, good. And you had the live knock to lead the way, right? So, so speaking of Luminoc, yeah. let, let's go through, you, you got one. Can you take us through the a construction of Luminoc, how they're kind of constructed and, and how they fit into the arrow? Yep. Well, it, as far as it goes, the owners and inventors of the entire lighted knock category wanted to keep it as simple as humanly possible. Um, they didn't want moving parts that can fail. Uh, they didn't want any anything else on it that can fail. It's a, it's a very simple concept, much like a you know a light switch in your house. Um, <clears throat> they require a carbon arrow. 
uh, a full carbon arrow uh, because carbon is conductive to be able to complete the circuit because the Luminox have two little tabs sticking out each uh, each side, if I could talk, of the knock. Um, and once they come in contact with that, you know, the carbon arrow, it completes the circuit. Thusly, the light comes on and, you know, it, it turns on from a, a minimum of 20 pounds of pressure. Uh, that little bit on the low side there, but it, it will activate depending on how uh, how they're installed. Um, and one of the biggest things that I have over the last couple of years had to deal with was at, at just a, it's a very at, I I don't I'm not too politically correct I'm straightforward so I'm just going to let it rip um, you know most of the problems that I've heard about have been you know an operator or installation error um, and that's why the owners. Um, have this great thing here that comes with every single pack of knocks. This is not instructions. This is stuff you must know. So it's okay for guys to read them. They're allowed to. <laughs> it's not instructions, so it's okay. We can we can actually read it. Nice. But um, you know, it, it, I do. You know, it, it, that's going to cover you know, 90, you know, 98% of any kind of problems that people were having, you know, if there, if there was a too tight a fit, um, there's uh, some raised notches on the shaft of the knock, and you can actually shave those down with a sharp knife or a razor, you know, obviously being careful not to, you know, not to slice yourself in the process, but that's what they're there for. We want a tight fit. We don't want too tight where you're, you know, 200 pounds a guy trying to, you know, use all your weight uh, to get the knock into the arrow. You want a nice um, uh, snug fit. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you don't want it too loose either. You know, I, I've, I've heard stories that, and, and it hasn't been with, with Luminox, but excuse me, if they had, uh, you know, I, I've heard, you know, the knock stayed on the, uh, the knock stayed on the, the draw line. And Whoops. well, that, you, yeah, you don't want that to happen either. But um, yeah, like I said, it, it uh, Luminox requires a full carbon arrow to or bolt for that matter um, to be able to complete the circuit, much like the light switch in your house. Uh, it's made simply. There's no moving parts on it. Uh, no tools necessary to turn the knock off. Although there is a, a pretty neat little one that I do uh, that I do like to use on a regular basis, and um, that would be. This little thing here, it's called the knock extinguisher. It's also an arrow puller. So if you go to your buddy's house and he's got a stubborn target, I, I carry this around just clipped right on my arrow in my quiver or, you know, in either quiver on the crossbow or, you know, on my on my uh, my target quiver and on my hunting quiver. Um, and, you know, if you've got slip, slippery hands after you, you've taken a deer and you want to shut your knock off, well, this thing comes in really handy. And like I said, even go to your buddy's house and that stubborn target, you have an arrow puller with you. Dual purpose. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. And all right, here, here's the green. All right. Oh, that, that's a, that's, that's pretty bright coming through the screen on, on, it's pretty bright. Yeah. Um, but realistically, thumb, forefinger, wiggle it just a wee little bit to break that contact and the knocks off. No moving parts, no tools, no nothing. The other cool thing is this extinguisher. You put it on, you got the ears of the knock up, down, or, you know, however you want to do it sideways. I usually go up, down, you put your, put your extinguisher on there, give it a quick little shake and boom, it's off. Nice. A little shake and it's gone. Well, we got a couple of questions coming in here for you that uh, we've got All some, right. some viewers here asking. Uh, first one is uh, how long, so let's say you shoot, you shoot at a deer and you, you go out to track it, but you leave the arrow laying there on the ground so you know where your point of reference is to start. How right. long will that knock stay lit once it's turned on? On an average, 40 continuous hours. And I've shot a deer, and uh, I've, I've found um, the arrow on the knock actually about nine days later. And, I mean, it was, it was dim as anything, but it was enough in the dark for me to be able to find that arrow but um, on, on the average, 40 continuous hours. So if you take, take a deer in the morning and, you know, you can't find the arrow or, or the bolt, um, 
you know, you, you can leave it lay until it gets dark out again and, and walk out and get your arrow without any kind of a problem, turn it off, you know, um, put it back in your quiver and, and it's ready to go for the next morning. Okay. And then we got a question here from Mark Coleman. You, you actually mentioned you're talking about bolts and it's, he's got a question. He said he just ordered the flat knocks for his crossbow. Any tips okay. uh, on, on using them or installing them? Because he's hearing mixed reviews about how they fit. You can you give him some advice about installation on his crossbow bolts? Okay. Well, uh, does he have uh, does he have the Luminoc package there? Um, that's a good question. Don't know. Maybe we'll get something. He here. just ordered. Oh no, he, he just ordered he them. He just yeah. ordered them. So he's just kind of hearing things about them. He ordered them. Oh, he has been, he's not received them yet. Not right. yet. He just ordered them today. So what should, what should he be looking for when he gets that package? It, it, it just the same thing when he gets that package, you know, whether it's whether it's this style, the fold open one, or if he gets a plastic one, it'll have this insert in it. And like I said, if you go through that stuff, you must know that's going to eliminate any kind of uh, the majority, 98 percent of um, any kind of problems or issues that you're going to have with any kind of installation. Um you know, first thing, if they're a little bit on, you know, a little bit on the tight side, you can actually use beeswax, crayon, candle wax as a little bit of lubrication to get the knock down into the shaft of that arrow or bolt, whatever the case may be. It's the same thing, bolts or, you know, bolts or, or compound arrows. Um, other than that, if it's still a bit too tight, that's where you're going to get into the shaving the set thing. And right when you pull that knock out of that package, you, you can feel around the shaft of it. You'll feel, you'll feel the raised, um, the raised, uh, I guess, uh, hot notches or something, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you'll feel them and then you just, you know, you get the, the razor, just shave it off just a little bit, try it again. And then, you know, it should, you know, should start sliding in a little bit easier. But like I said, we want a, you know, a very snug fit, but we don't, you know, want something that it's going to take, you know, 200 pounds of guy on the top of an arrow uh, to Put, get that putting in? in there. Yeah. Exactly. I get it. You know, just just snug. And Don't once it? again, they're not instructions. They're things you need they're to like know. A, things to need to know, like a check. You must know. Right. Things they're you not. must know because guys don't read instructions. Yep. You know, you showed us a green one. What colors do they, what do, What colors do Luminox all come in? Well, there there's three different colors. You've got pink, HD orange, and green. Uh, with the pink Knox, which actually I see the best, um... You have a uh, part of that purchase price. Those pink knocks actually gets donated to uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital and helping out those great kids over there, man. I mean, it, it, it's a win-win. I mean, they're bright as heck. You know, the, the kids get a donation for a lot of stuff that they need. And, um, you know, it, it's a great program. And that's one of the things that I really do love about that situation. And, um, but, but you know, what's kind of cool is, is at the shows that I do, you'll... Um, You'll have three, say three guys that come up and, and one saying, okay, well, I don't see this one. I, you know, you, you, I walk 20 feet away. And then each of those guys could say that they either see one says they see green better. One says HD orange is better. And then the other one pink is better. Ah, So it's kind of one of those interesting things that you can do at shows. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of fun to do and because they don't realize it, you know, I've had guys come up and say, well, yeah, they're, they, you know, they're not bright, you know, this, that, the other. And I'm like, well, you know, what color, you know, what color did you have? And he said, you know, they say uh, green. I'm like, well, hold on a second. I'll let me walk away. And they're like, wow, I see that, that HD orange a lot better. I'm like, everybody's eyes are different. That's and right. How, you, know, you know, and they see colors. Absolutely. That's a, that's a true statement about, about seeing different colors. But I notice also, we're looking at the website right now, that the, it, not one Luminox is created equal because you've got s Knox, h Knox, gt Knox, and x Knox. What's that all about? Uh, GT, 0.246 for gold. The majority of gold tip arrows, there's one or two that are a little bit on the odd odd size. And I, I right now, it's escaping my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the 244 and 245 are the S-knock. Um, and that, that's going to be the majority uh, of arrows out there. The H is 0.234. And the X is 0.204 inner diameter on the shafts. And 
if you're someone who uh, likes to shoot the micro diameter ones, uh, we actually make an adapter called the H adapter. Okay. And what that is, is you'll have to call the office um, directly and give them the information on uh, your arrow, your micro diameter shafts, and then they custom make those adapters and per or Right. There's You're talking, from what I'm looking at, the, we're looking at the, actually I went to the website and I went to the knock selector and we're looking at uh, the different sizes that you have and that Luminoc H with the knock adapter says four millimeters ish. But like you said, just simply call the office and find out what you need for your small diameter. Yep, they, and they custom make those adapters uh, per order. There's not a stock of them, you know, uh, because there's so many different arrows that, that have been coming out here in the micro diameter, you know, size here as of, you know, the last few, you know, last few years, they seem to be making a big comeback. I mean, I, I remember, you know, heck, probably, you know, 15 plus years ago, they were, you know, there were a big thing coming in and, um, you know, and they kind of just, you know, faded by the wayside and that, now it seems they're, you know, they're making, making a little bit of a comeback, but, uh, that H adapter, uh, fits that 0.234 knock and reason that adapter is made is the fact that Luminoc will not sacrifice quality, uh, to make a small enough knock to fit into that shaft. Um, they'd have to take away too much of the material, which would make it way less durable than what Luminac is known for. Right, and exactly. Not, so they're, they're, they're not going to throw it down the drain. Their, their, their reputation, their name, everything they, they're built on just for that. Yep. Well, I'll tell you and what. Then, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Those adapters get sent to you with um, a, a, a piece, little piece of sandpaper to prep your arrow, glue, and the instructions on how to go ahead and, uh, you know, glue those outserts onto your arrows. And then the rest is the same process in the stuff you must know, not instructions. <laughs> um, the, the stuff you must know that comes in in every, every package um, of the uh, of the Luminox, whether it be bolts or, you know, uh, bolt, uh, crossbow knocks or compound. Okay, well, okay, we've so. got a couple questions here, but we want to save them. We're going to take a break real quick. Step outside. When we come back, we got two questions here. Uh, at least right now, if we get some more in the break, then we'll ask when we come back. So we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Second segment, of the, or third segment of the third show. Segment third of the segment, show. segment of the show. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting behind myself here. Right. So I uh, had a little bit of technical difficulty to get started with. I'm kind of confused here. I know. But we've got some questions <laughs> piling here for you. So so, so, so the, let's go. Let's start. Let's. We talked about the the Nox, uh for the regular bows being uh, you go to the Knox selector. Let's talk about the crossbow one because basically there's, there's, there's really two, right? You've got the half moons and you've got the flats, correct? Is that how... Is that oh, how? No, uh, uh, Parker is what's called a capture, which is is pretty. It, 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 just for lack of a better a, a better description, it's pretty comparable to what you know uh, what you'd expect on like a compound knock that'll you know slide on the string, mm -hmm. <clears throat> more U shaped. Um, then there's a crescent, and then there's the flat. And you know a lot of people you know. Um, that they may prefer the flat over over the crescent, but the the capture knocks were generally made for Parker bows, okay, and uh, or Parker crossbows rather. And then uh, you know, as long as there's a Parker bow uh, out there, um, we will make the the capture knocks for those bows. Just because the company went out of business doesn't mean that we're not going to help them, you know, get the right knock for the you know the the crossbow that they have exactly so what colors does, does the crossbow ones come in same green uh green hd orange and pink and it, it's the same deal with st oh. jude's on the uh, on the crossbow side too okay that is awesome so we got the same colors for the crossbow now questions for the crossbow uh we got coming in um first off 
Uh, one question about the whole entire line. Is there any plans do you know of, of making a blinker or maybe a strobe type knack for the future of Luminac? Uh, that I, I can't, I don't know 100%, but okay. I know I, I know as of right now um, they're, they're, that they're not really planning on it. Um, as far as it goes, it, when you're getting into you know, into stuff like that, you're you're having to add extra battery power, and then as as you add extra battery power, you're adding uh, more weight to the back end of that arrow that you're going to have to compensate for. And um, you know, the uh, our batteries now, uh, like I said, have a uh, a continuous runtime of 40 hours, and you know, there's been a lot of testing done. Um, to, to you know, to to make these colors, they're they're the ones that are the majority that stand out the best to most people. And they again, um, they don't want to have to go to a two battery, you know, a two battery yep, system indeed. to be able to uh, you know to to do that, you know. And and it, it, that's just it, that's kind of just the way that it is right now. And, and you know, I can't speak a hundred percent for the future, but as of right now, I'm not a, I'm not aware of anything that's going to be you know into you know any different colors than what we already okay. make. Um, or getting into that, uh, getting into that flashing thing, and I, I really haven't heard anything about the, uh, you know, the Bluetooth. Right. As, it, it, oh yeah, they, there's know. also they got the Bluetooth out there. Uh, one another question: uh, Do you have any uh, preference between the uh, half moon and the flats? flats? What's your opinions of it? You know, I, as far as that goes, that's going to be user, you know, user preference. Um, I, I personally shoot the Crescent. Um, it seems to work for me. Uh, I've heard some people say that, um, you know, it, it, with the, the Crescent on there, they, you know, the, the back of the uh, bolt is, is raised up a little bit or something like that. And, and then, you know, they, they prefer the flat because of that reason. Um you know, it, a lot of it is it's user preference. I mean, just like, you know, uh, what arrow size do you want to, you know, do you want to use? Again, user preference. And I mean, um, you get, like I said, the GT, um, those are gold tip. And uh, those actually only come in uh, orange and green because of the, uh, I guess, the mold being so similar, uh, the pink, I guess, would get very confusing. Um, and I'm kind of confused on that story myself. I've heard it a couple different ways. But uh, either way, like I said, the GT only comes in the HD orange or the green. But, you know, every every other one comes in in all three colors, uh, in, in, you know, including uh, all the, uh, the compound bolts or uh, crossbow bolts. And, you know, the same thing thing on that knock selector you can select compound or crossbow your model of your arrow and the manufacturer of that arrow or bolt and it'll take you to uh, the area where you know you need the it then you make the choice on what color or what style um you, you want to use and you know a lot of them uh they have all three you can use crescent flat or even capture on a lot of them and so it really is personal preference Okay. There you go. So, so with that being said, do you, um, if you use a half moon, do you use a flat? Is there any change that you need to do if you're using one or the other? If you start off using the half moons, and let's say you 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 get flats, is there going to be any difference between the two uh, in your crossbow if you've got one of each and you're going to shoot them or? You know what? I that I've actually never um, that I've actually never do, but I've never done. But you know, now that you brought it up, I've actually I'll actually probably go ahead and do that. Maybe do a video on it here in the future. I'll get a, uh, a set of flats and you know I'd install them and and maybe give it a rip at that point. But as far as I know, no, it, it's really user preference. I mean, um, it. it yeah, I mean, I honestly, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't heard anything like that yet, or done anything like that at this point. But, you know, again, since you brought it up, that might be something actually pretty cool to play with. Well, looking at that, I just made me think of something. Talking about weight issues, um, you know, they're shaped differently. It's probably very minuscule. But, uh, you know, I know a lot of guys are concerned with, you know, making things, uh, you know, uh, weight forward and, and loading on the front end. 
uh, of an arrow, uh, you know, front of center and things of that nature. I mean, when we're talking about the knock, there's very little weight there. But w what do those actually weigh compared to a regular knock? Do you know? Uh, they're they're about 10 grains heavier than a normal knock that comes in, you know, whatever stock arrows that you get. Um, I, I believe they come in at 20. 24 or 26 grains and then the uh i believe the average knock is somewhere right about uh right about uh 14. okay so it, it really when you're coming down to something in in the aspect of of that little bit of of grain i i've not you i've not noticed anything um you know, really different when I go out, shoot 40, you know, 40, 60 yards and, you know, I could, I'll pull a, you know, stock knock out, put a new Luminoc in and I'll still be, you know, right where I need to be. And I mean, that's, that's just so minuscule. I mean, that's like, you know, you, you put several dashes of salt into your palm and, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's going to come out, you know, uh, that's going to come out to be that, that grain difference. And yeah, some people are, they're very concerned about it, but in my, in my experience and in my opinion, I've not seen any, you know, any flight differences or, um, any adjustments that I that I needed to make, you know, they were, you know, I, I swapped them out and they were uh, three inches low. Um, no, I've, I've not seen anything like that at all. And, you know, I, I can't tell you what's going to happen at, you know, 150 yards. Um, but I know I shoot, you know, 60 pretty regularly and, and I have no issue. I'll pull, like I said, I'll pull the, the knock that came in the arrow, put in my Luminoc and it's off to the races and it, it, that's about all I got on that. Okay. Well, we just, we got uh, a statement here from, from one of our listeners who is, we actually know, and he is a, a former uh, bow mechanic, worked at one of the, okay. the shops here in the area. And he says, uh, talking about the crossbows, what we're just talking about, about switching from like a, a half moon to a, uh, to a flat knock. And he, he's saying that there, the tolerances on these are, are, are really tight. And he says, you need to be very careful when switching from what the manufacturer actually suggests, because, uh, he's actually seen some come in with some damage done, uh, by, by switching because of the actual end user didn't like the style. So he said, before you start switching back and forth, he said, you need to really pay attention to that and stick with what uh, the manufacturers are are putting on the ends of their bolts. So I think that's pretty good advice. You know, maybe talk to your yeah. pro shop before you do something like that to make sure it's okay. Oh yeah. And I mean, when you, you go on to that knock selector, you go into the, um, you know, you go into the, uh, the catalog and, um, the tolerances are, you know, it, it, if it, Luminac makes them, they, they can operate on, you know, on that specific bolt, uh, in that size. And if, you know, they're listed across the board, say, uh, point, uh, point three, three zero zero, uh, GTC, uh, which is the, uh, the Crescent, the GT, um, F, which is the flat, and then you got the capture. And if, you know, those are listed across the board, um, they're designed to, um, be able to deal with those tolerances that are made by said, you know, uh, mm -hmm. crossbow manufacturer. Exactly. That's one of the things. Always be careful. Always check your, you know, some, some, especially this day and age with, with tolerances and everything that how Swiss watch type things we're getting just that little bit. You don't, you don't, you don't need an accident to happen because of, uh, could right. be just what you were feeling that right. day and you know just make sure when you go ahead if you're going to do it if you make sure with the manufacturer what they prefer yeah. before you make yeah. a change and usually they do they'll say hey mm -hmm. use use half moons or, or, or you can use flats mm -hmm. but don't just go on a whim change make sure with the manufacturer first yeah make sure it's a safety yeah, thing we don't need it blowing up in your face we'll call a customer service line I yep yeah it, well yeah i mean it, as far as it goes if you go on that on that knock selector and and it says you can use the the gtf or the gtc or or whatever um the the knocks are made uh significantly thicker mm -hmm. for the crossbow than they are for the actual you know compound arrows given the fact that crossbows are you know at a very realistically uh real soon i i think they're going to be in the 500 foot per second um you know area and i mean most are most of these days are, are right around you know uh at, at three three fifty to four hundred feet per second and 
the Knox that Luminoc makes, they're they're significantly thicker um, than what you know the average compound knock is. Uh, so they're they're designed to not explode. And that is definitely something that we do not want to happen. No, not but at then, all. You know, but then on the flip side of that, if you if you call the manufacturer um, and and the the knocks that came in the bolts that came with that crossbow, they're they're obviously going to recommend you know you you can only use you know these products. Well, it, you know that that I, I don't want to say anything negative about it, but you know it. it that it, if you, you know, you could, you could say that about any, you know, about any kind of product out there with any kind of variance because the company wants you, um, you know, to use their products. And as far as it goes, say Raven, um, Raven crossbows, we are, uh, we have a contract with them. We are the OEM manufacturer of the, uh, crossbow, you know, the Raven bolt knocks, okay. um, and so, you know, it, as far as that goes, that is, you can only buy those through Raven, but we are the original manufacturer of those. And, you know, that being the case, we, you know, it, the name is still on, you know, the package made by Lumina, but, you know, they're, they're still, you know, up, yep, up some of the best crossbows out there. I mean, uh, you don't get, you know, these days anything, you know, it's getting better all the way down the line in the crossbow area. Yeah, definitely. There's there's definitely uh, uh, everything is getting better in all the lines, whether it be a bow or crossbow. But I tell you what, we got to make another. We got to make our last break, and when we come back, we've got another question for you about the beginning of Lumina. All right, we're gonna step outside and we'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. We got a lot of good questions coming in tonight. A lot of good stuff. So, uh, got a couple more that's just popped yeah, in here in the actually, break. Actually, one of one of the one one of the uh, okay. So the first question is, uh, how long has Illuminac been around? Well, um, to my knowledge, uh, the Price brothers, Mr. Eric Price and Mr. Curtis Curtis Price. Um, basically had a similar situation to what many of us have had in the past. Um, and, you know, they're out hunting, they, they blow through a deer, and, and you're out a broadhead, you're out an arrow, and they're like, well, and I want to do something to, to change this. And I believe the idea started coming out in, like, 1998, and they were in a big, uh, getting onto the store shelves, I believe, in 2002, uh, is when all of that was said and done. And, um, you know, I, I started shooting them uh, within three or four years afterwards. And, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I, I didn't know if it was a gimmick or, or, or what the deal was. So, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I watched all these hunting shows and Luminax getting more press and more press and more press. And as they stuck around for a year, two, three, I was like, well, you know, maybe there's something to this. And then on um, the hunt right before I went out and actually bought a couple of packs back in, I think it was 2005 or 2006. And I had been, I'd, I'd shot two deer and I recovered the deer. I couldn't find my arrows, broadhead arrow gone. Um, the other one, you know, is archers, you know, we never miss, but, uh, you know, <laughs> right. it, it's the arrow's fault, the bow's fault, uh, the, uh, the east wind at seven miles an hour, you know, uh, I, I can't tell you what happened, but I launched one somewhere into oblivion somehow. I think my release slipped off and, uh, you know, so I was out three arrows that year and I mean, I didn't have any you know, any thoughts of finding the ones that, you know, that I launched into the uh, stratosphere. <laughs> um, but the other two, I mean, they, they, you know, should have been recoverable, you know, somewhat behind that deer. 
and you know they you get under the leaves or or you know you, uh, a shot goes into the thicket you know after it passes through or whatnot and you know we all love you know digging through all those wild rose thorns and <laughs> Right. You know, everything else, that's our favorite to deal with. You know, we, we like looking, we got, you know, like we got attacked by a cat, um, you know, after we were trying to find our arrows after a pass through. And well, finally on, on that year, I was just like, I'm done. I'm going to go, I'm going to go give these things a try. And, um, you know, since then it, it's been Luminox. Luminox has been in, in, in all my arrows. Um, they're made to practice with, you know, right, hundreds exactly. of, so eight, God, 18 years in know? the business, they kind of know what they're doing. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, I mean, they're making, the, they're you know, and, to be practiced with. Exactly. You know? And another question, uh, speaking of, of, of years, uh, what about temperature? Does single digit temperatures affect them at all? Like if it's zero degrees out, are we going to have an effect on the lightedness or what, how they're, they're functioning or, uh, not. Not that I've seen. Um, it, even in Southern Illinois, I mean, we're we're uh, down an average about ten degrees uh, in the fall and in the winter time. We're we're roughly about ten degrees warmer. But I mean, I've been out, you know, zero degrees and 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 even you know into the into the negatives. And and I've you know taken deer and I've I've never had an issue. Um, it, as far as it goes with you know not lighting up or not lighting up for that matter um so I, that's that's i mean from my personal experience personal experience I, I says no difference issue. no difference temperature wise which is a good thing yep. that way you're not and, afraid not afraid to be out there when it is zero well i mean i i that's not my favorite time i don't believe <laughs> anybody's but you know uh we're, we all go into the woods looking like a state puff marshmallow man and you know it kind of is what it is and kind of the torture that we put ourselves through but you know the luminox are made to be they're made to be practiced with they're made to be shot you know over and over and over again and i mean i i quite honestly i go out you know into my backyard and i'm, I'm shooting after the first three shots the knocks I, I leave them on until i'm done Okay. And, you know, the batteries are replaceable. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes maybe about two minutes to do it. Um, a very simple process by all means. Um, as far as that goes, it's, it, you know, you, you remove the knock from the arrow. And depending on the knock, uh, there, there's one different, which is the X knock. It's kind of got an L-shaped bra L shaped bracket underneath that holds the battery in that way. Uh, but the uh, the rest of them, there's a, uh, a a wire. You unwind that wire, you know, wiggle the battery out, and you'll see a black O-ring that's on that battery. Uh, Luminox are waterproof. You can go bow fishing with Luminox. Nice. Uh, um, they are uh, as far as that goes, and then you just you know you simply pull the arrow, you know, knock out or the uh, battery out of the knock, and um, you know that O ring. Uh, the batteries come in a two pack. It's like two for five or five bucks or something like that. And I mean, it, as far as that goes, and it's not a bad process to change it. it. You know, you uncoil the wire, pull that battery out, and then I do recommend uh, from experience again. Uh, do it on, uh, do the swap, the, the swap over of the O-rings on a light surface or even, you know, lay out a paper towel because that little black O-ring in that circumstance <laughs> is gold. And right? if, it, if it drops onto a, a darker carpet or, or just, you know, goes under something, chances on you finding it before the vacuum cleaner are pretty <laughs> about is you know as much as high as you go you know and and you know get a lottery ticket and you know it's a bad deal so a white paper towel white countertop uh, however you want to do it that o-ring is gold in that circumstance we hey well, we sell. just got a comment here from one of our guys kyle says he says done that before actually highly recommended he says that's an awesome tip <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's again speaking from experience, and you're sitting there with the knock you can't use yeah. because the battery's not gonna, you know, it, it's not gonna retain itself in there. And 
But as far as it goes, you, you swap that O-ring out to the new battery and you can use, you know, use saliva a little bit for lubrication because mm -hmm. rubber going into plastic, you know, right. and they're, you know, and, and they don't like to cooperate together. So, you know, I always just, you know, give it a little, little saliva, you know, work it back up in there. And then uh, one of the ways that you can go ahead and test it to make sure that you have the battery installed correctly is use that wire that's that it you got out of the way now um touch one of the contacts one's a ground one's a one's a positive so once you hit that positive one it the knock will light up you'll see that you've got the battery installed correctly wrap that wire right right around the battery put that knock back in your arrow and you're ready to go for the next shot there you go guys and gals sounds like uh, uh some great advice on how to change the batteries out so absolutely definitely so we got any more questions here? You know, their motto is, is you bought our product. We just want to maintain it years to come. Just like if you buy a car, right. um, you know, you, you go to the dealership, they say, Hey, you know, come back here for the oil changes. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's the same thing in Lumina. We don't want you to have to go out and buy another, you know, another three pack of Knox or anything right, like exactly. that. But we could just, you know, buy a $5, or, you know, $6, you know, pair of batteries um, I mean, heck, I, I probably, as much as I shoot, I think I only go through three batteries a year. Um, I always swap them out right before hunting season. And then I use them all the way through my, you know, the, the off season and the spring and, and summertime. And, you know, as they start to get dim, you know, toward the end of the uh, end of the summertime or right before season, I swap them out. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, the runtime on them is just, it, it's great. Like I said, I, I shoot them. Uh, I don't turn them off until I get back in the house. There you go. There you go. You know, uh, speaking of out of the house and up a tree and all all that all that hunting stuff, got a couple questions for you. Uh, we typically ask this all of all our interviewers. Uh, you're heading out to your tree stand. You're driving. What are you listening to on the radio? Country. <laughs> country it is. Old country, new country. Old. <laughs> old country. So we got an old country. By far. Okay. Um, We're going to get along you know, just fine. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the newer, you know, I mean, and it's been around a long time, but I mean, like Toby Keith, you know, uh, Trace Adkins, uh, you know, guys like that. And then, you know, uh, then before Cash and Waylon and, you know, um, you know, Highwaymen. All right. You know, so, so old country it is. Exactly. Yep. So so you're listening to old country. What's your favorite snack to have while you're up in the tree or in your ground blind and you're and you're waiting on that that deer to come in? What's your favorite snack to have in the backpack? You know, uh, with me, I I can't tell you. Uh, it's it's kind of going to be based on that day, and you know, if if I eat uh, if I eat breakfast before I go out, or you know, if I don't, you know, a lot of the time I just I just go out there with you know a, a few bottles of water, and I'll usually you know bring a sandwich and you know leave the sandwich in the truck or something because most of the properties. <laughs> That I hunt, and I'm I'm a I'm a disabled able hunter, um, so I I have you know stuff set up where it's going to be easier for me to walk to, and you know when I need to get out and I need to walk around, I'll you know I'll go to the truck and grab the sandwich, or you know I'll stick it in my backpack with me, and heck, I mean if I want it, it's there. If I don't, I'll bring it home, and you know it, it's dinner or it's ready for the next day. Oh, okay, all right. So 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 okay. So we got your your country music. We've got your 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 what you're gonna snack on maybe out in the woods. But now you invited Dan and Mike over for a dinner, and you're gonna make us dinner, and you're gonna make us what you would be your go-to uh, maybe venison meal or, or or something. What would be the go-to meal that you'd say, "Hey guys, I'm gonna make this for you." I've got two. Ah. One is I've I've got a pretty famous chili that I put out, um, and then the other one is actually breaded. Uh, tender, uh, tenderized uh, venison uh, cutlets, uh, breaded with uh, milk, egg, and uh, bread. You know, flour um, and bread breadcrumbs. Uh, it's actually a German recipe that I use, and it's it deep fried. Um, and then it's got a red wine reduction or a um, or a a brown a, a brown. Almost gravy. like a you're almost heading down like a stroganoff type thing. Uh, actually, more like a schnitzel, believe Ooh, it or not. It's sounding good. Yep. 
pork, te- you know, pork tenderloin, same thing, same kind of process, depending on where you go to. If you've got a Bohemian restaurant or a German restaurant or anything by y'all up there, you can, you know, go check that out. You know, uh, the Wiener schnitzel, the pork tenderloin, the pork schnitzel, it, it's the same thing, but I do it with, uh, I do it with venison, sweet cabbage, and uh, red boiled potatoes. And you'll be snoozing on the couch about 15 minutes after because of a food coma. I, I, it sounds like it. I tell you what, that sounds good. Okay, last question we got for you. Well, you just fed us that meal. We're not going to be snoozing, though. We're going to be listening to one of your favorite, maybe a hunting story, a story that comes to you that you're going to tell us. What would that story be? Oh, wow. There, there's there's a bunch of them. Uh, oh, heck. I mean, it, you know, and a lot of them are, are the resilience uh, factors of the deer. Um, you know, it just, it just the amazing things that I've seen that just, you know, completely and totally blew my mind. Like, you know, um, I mean, heck I, I shot, uh, I mean, with a shotgun, um, I shot a buck, dropped him, you know, first shot, waited about an hour to go get him. And I was laying, he didn't move a muscle. I mean, I was looking at him in clear field. I mean, there was nothing between me and him, nothing, no how. And um, got within probably about 15 yards of him, and he he got up and and you know it started moving his way away again. And I mean he wasn't moving all that fast, but he he had a little bit of a clip to it. And yeah, I put another you know another round through him. Uh, well, at that point I didn't know that I had hit him. Um, and uh, I, I I had give I had a buddy with me, and he he had tagged out for the season and. Um, uh, part of this cool story is it, if you're familiar with like Jim Shockey, you know, where he puts his bow above his head and it, you know, he's walking like he's a moose mm-hmm. or an elk or something like that. And we kind of did that with my shotgun and my, my guy that was with me, he put his head between my shoulder blades and we walked through this little bit of a low. We saw this buck come out. So we were trying to close the distance on him, and and that's what we did. We actually did that Jim Shockey maneuver, and uh, anyway, so I, you know, I I shot again. I mean, I, you know, I was shaking, I was happy, I, you know, cool. It was a, it was a good buck, a, a a good solid eight, and um, you know, so it, and he was still walking after my second shot. I'm like, dude, here, <laughs> and, and I handed the gun to my buddy, and he he popped him again. Um, went about another twenty or thirty feet, dropped and come to find that there were six holes in that deer through the vitals wow wow and, yeah, i mean it was and that's a you know with a two and three quarter inch um you know sabot slug um and i you know i've shot deer with you know w- with my broadheads and i mean you follow a trail that looks like a river of yep blood. exactly and, and, and look at this one six well this one's got six holes in it and it's still going you know, it, yeah. it, it's interesting you bring up this point. Uh, you know, we ask about the memories or a story you're going to tell, but you bring up the resilience of these animals, you know, and that just, to me, that shows the respect that you have for these animals. Oh, absolutely. You I know. kneel everyone. I, I, I kneel down. I put my hand on it. I look straight up and, you know, give the big dude up there a nod. And absolutely. And say thank you very much. And, you know, my uncle up there looking over me, uh, you know, helping me be safe and successful out there. And I mean, he taught me, you know, he taught me just about everything, my uncle and my grandfather. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's another one. I mean, shoot, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I put a good, you know, pump station shot on it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd watched like a river, you know, like a river of blood following it. And somehow it made it down near close to a half a mile. And I mean, I didn't have no clue. I mean, it had to, you know, spit out. The, well, every... that, that's the amazing, that's the amazing part of animals and how they survive. And, Absolutely. And, and with, the, with what they, what, what they have to pres- persevere through to get there right yeah. and look what you went through with that one you know speaking of that um what uh we've been talking about luminox this whole time and we forgot one thing where can people go to find out more information about them what's the website that they can go to to look for luminox luminox.com and right right when you go on there it's going to pop onto that web uh uh, pop onto the website and you're going to get that knock selector feature. And that, you know, it's very simple. Top one type, you know, compound crossbow. Next one is going to be, I get these messed up all the time, but the next two are the model and the manufacturer. 
of the arrow. And right when you, you know, you, you put your info in, it's going to pull you up to your knock. You pick your colors, and I do have all three of them uh, sitting here with me. Uh, let me fire them up here real quick. So we can see what they look like. Yep, you just go over to Luminoc Luminoc.com. You go to the second selection, the knock selector. Make your picks if you're going to use a crossbow or a regular bow. And you can see on the screen, if you're on the podcast, get to our live stream so you can yeah, see. Yeah, see what he's got right here. There you go. What color is that? That would be the pink. All right. The St. Jude's pink. It's, you see, I mean, I, this is the one that stands out to me. The most. The best. Yeah. And, I mean, I, uh, the HD orange is coming in, a, you know, going to come in a close second. And, again, just, you know, thumb and forefinger. That one's off. You saw the green already? There's the HD orange. Okay. And then I'll fire up fire up the original, the green, uh, that was the first one that came out. I actually have one one of my original GT knocks that I had bought back in back in two thousand six or, or whenever it was, and I I still have it. Uh it still if I put a battery in it, um, will light up just as bright as that one did. Uh, just there. That's awesome. So, that is awesome. You, you know what, Bill? I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. Uh, we've had you on for almost an over an hour, it looks like. And uh, we just wanted to have you thank you for coming on, talking with us about lighted knocks. And uh, if you're all set, I think we can wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, I tell you what, we're going to wrap up the podcast portion here. Uh, as soon as we're done here, Bill, hang with us. And, but uh, for those of you on the podcast, uh, we're going to wrap up the show tonight. Uh, next week, we're going to we're going to attempt to have a show. It's going to be pre recorded. If not, that's because Danny and I didn't get our work done here behind the scenes this week, and we're actually going to be up north. But we're we're we've got something planned. We're going to try to get that out to you. So stay you tuned. Can't blame me for that part. Hey, it, it's it's hunting season. What can I say? <laughs> we so, got to get out to the woods. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody Amen. on the yeah. So, Amen. So everybody on the podcast, make sure you go over to Facebook, give us a like, follow, share. Do the same for Luminoc as well. And uh, you know we're on Twitter, we're on uh, uh, Instagram. You know check Twitter, out Twitter, Instagram. Uh, YouTube. YouTube, go over there, give us a like, follow, share, and share the show for us if you would. And if you're listening on iTunes, make sure you go over and give us a review. That helps us out. And don't forget to go and check out the people who help us, our, our show sponsors, that will actually uh, save you some money in the long run. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. Y'all take care, and we'll be back again next week. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Buck Bait. Better the Hunt. Rebel 6 Rubs and Seasonings. Easy Cut. Limb Walker Game Call. Sunrise Archery. Total Heat, Hunters Playing Coffee, Packer Mac, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Scent Blocker, Scent Lock, Copper Jab, and Stanislavski Release Aids. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.